All right, hey all, this is just a video on the appearing of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do much talking, we're just going to let the scriptures talk. This is only going to be about a 10 minute video, so you can take the scriptures and seek the truth yourself. Now this is about the appearing of Jesus Christ, let's let the scriptures speak. Now I understand there's some scriptures that's written to the circumcision, which many think are divided from us, but we'll see what these scriptures have to say. So let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. I want you to remember the word appear, what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Matthew twenty four thirty, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Titus 2.13 Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of that great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Timothy 4.1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge... Same time as the judgment seat of Christ, judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. This is after Daniel's 70th week, the same event that John's waiting for, the resurrection, the rapture, why he said it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear we shall be like him. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. First Peter five four When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now what did Paul say in Timothy? I charge thee before the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. The same event is the judgment seat of Christ, okay, which is the appearing of Christ, the day of Christ, the coming of our Lord. Um, excuse me, Second Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Now I want you to notice the King James Bible uses pure words and pure language. It's written by the Holy Spirit. There are power in the words of God and they are pure words. They're not just written like a book. These words line up, line upon line, precept upon precept. So Hebrews 9.28 So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him he shall appear, the second time without sin unto salvation. 1 John 2.28 2, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we shall have com we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So his appearing is his coming in John twenty two two eight. Okay. Notice ashamed before him at his coming, which is his appearance. The same appearance in Timothy, his appearing in his kingdom, first Timothy six fourteen, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's just go to the next chapter. Which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and potent, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Second Timothy 4 a. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown, just like Peter said, a crown of glory, okay, of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, when is he going to be the righteous judge at the judgment seat of Christ? The righteous judge shall give me at that day, the same day in Second Thessalonians 2, the day of Christ, that day shall not come, except there come a falling away and that man of sin be revealed first. Okay, the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. First Peter 1 Seven that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, 
might be found unto praise, honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 2, 1 Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to even subdue all things unto himself. Now I've got that up there for a reason. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 1, verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather, the same gathering in Second Thessalonians 2, coming of our Lord and gathering together unto him, the same gathering in Matthew 24 when he appears, he send his angels out to gather his elect. Excuse me about that. So this is the fullness of times. He gathered together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. That matches First Thessalonians 4. Okay, the dead in Christ will rise first. That's the lot in heaven. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's them that's in the earth. Okay, but this is the fullness of times. Look at Revelation 10, 6. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. Do you see that? And what's this referring to? Let's go on to the next verse. There should be time no longer, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15 at the last trump? Okay, at the last trump. And he also said, behold, I show you a mystery, referring to the last trump. What happens here with the last angel, the seventh angel, the trumpet, the last trump? Okay, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Now remember, time shall be no longer. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he have declared unto his servants the promise, the prophets, notice the mystery of God should be finished. This is at the last trump, the seventh trumpet, when time shall be no longer. This is the fullness of times, when he will gather all things together. Now notice in Philippians, excuse me, I just need to open the door for my son. Um, Apologise about that. So now turn with me to Philippians. Now notice here, this is the same event as the gathering in the last trump. And Ephesians 1.10, the fullness of times. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So remember, our bodies are going to be changed and fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work and whereby he's able to even subdue all things into himself. That's when he's going to gather in the fullness of times, gather together in himself. Okay, now look at this to the circumcision, to John. So our bodies are going to be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Now look at John. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Now, are you telling me this isn't the same event as Philippians 3, which is to us today, okay, for the body of Christ, okay, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. John's waiting for the same body. When Jesus Christ appears, okay, he says, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay, so um, this is all I wanted to just show you. It's only an eight, nine minute video. You can take the notes and just write it down. It's not, you know, a big hour teaching. It was just something I wanted to give you on the appearing of Jesus Christ. And I hope it's blessed you all and edified you in Jesus name.